another video. This is the Suzuki Sidekick series where we take a 1997 Suzuki Sidekick and hopefully turn it into a real overland vehicle. So follow me over here and let's see what we're going to start working on. All right. Look what we got here. Almost a thing of beauty. Um, we're going to be working on this front bumper first. Okay, finally got the bumper off. In all honesty, these mounts that were installed here, welded onto the frame, actually look pretty good. The welds look pretty good inside and out. Um, looks like quarter inch angle iron that was welded on there. But before I go jump in the gun and assume that the bumper is the issue I want to make sure that this is level here's the bumper by itself I mean it might look small on the vehicle but this uh this little piece is actually pretty heavy and just by looking at it I could already see there's some discrepancies with some of the angles on here but that's why we're going to tackle this project uh, and get it on there and Make sure this is done correctly the second time. At the end of the day, you want to have this whole front uh, properly aligned before you try to put some aftermarket bumper on here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the grill back on now that I inspected it. Another thing I want to show you here, you're going to need these clips. I don't know if you can catch that on the camera there, but here's the numbers. If you need them, the little plastic clips. So most likely they don't last very long, but you're gonna need these to put that grill back on. And you're also gonna need a center screw to screw this uh, grill on there and fasten it on there properly. As you can see, I went ahead and reinstalled the grill after checking everything inside. This thing's on here. Pretty good. Check the line. Make sure they're pretty even. Everything looks good. These ends are pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and check these mounts real quick and make sure they're on there properly. All right, I went ahead and made these surfaces smooth. I'm gonna go ahead and put a plate on there. Feels pretty solid right there. It's a little bit of wobble back here in this corner, but not a whole lot. Yep, I can see it back here in the back corner. There's a gap back there. Don't know if you can see that back there, but as you can see, that one bracket that's mounted to the frame, it's got a little bit of light coming up from the back end. So what I want to do is close up that gap and I'm hoping by doing that these two brackets will be leveled off and then I can start working on the bumper itself. 
All right, after further inspection, I can see there's welds here. There's a weld on the top back here, weld on the side, and weld in here. Now, it's going to take a lot of work just to take this whole bracket off. So what I'm planning on doing is just try to cut the welds on the top here and make a clean cut right across the top of this bracket here instead of taking the whole mount off uh, and then I'm going to work from here They've slipped out of my control and you know where they hide Ooh, Your love's a little heavy, you're touching me already and it's working up my nerves You should probably forget me cause I'm terrified you'll get me when I'm at my worst It's not too late to let you know that you're in love with a ghost So run. Okay, this will be a good time to go ahead and put the bumper back on. You also want to put the grill back on as well. Because what you want to do here before you do any welding is mock everything up. Tack it down. Remove the grill back out and weld it in place. But I got this bracket off just enough. Well, I think I could get a level. As you can see I got the bumper back on. I don't know if you could tell, but it looks pretty square right there. Uh, yeah, the brackets <laughs> welded in. I don't know if you can see them at all, but they're pretty flush. This one here is pretty good. I don't have that, that little gap that I used to have. A good indicator that this bumper wasn't on there correctly is when it comes to these side brackets. I don't know if you can see this, but let me see that hole right there. Maybe it's off by a little bit. But I'll have to fix this bracket, align it, and get it right. I went ahead and cut this side as well because uh, when I was looking at the front, I could tell it wasn't squared. So I went ahead and cut this one. I'm going to go ahead and attach these back on and clean this up and then weld them back together. nice go I had to get this cleaned up because I got tired of trying to weld on uh, paint so I should be able to weld this a lot better put these on here they look terrible so I'm gonna have to clean these back up I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and I'm definitely gonna remove these makeshift brackets this is I don't think these are squared so I'm gonna take these off Put something else in its place. Clean up all of these welds. But uh got it cleaned up and I should be ready to get this somewhat in decent shape to put a winch right here. It'll be upside down.
Here I got that bumper completely done. Went ahead and got the brackets completely off, smoothed out. Receiver hitch removed. Also smoothed that area out. I was trying to avoid making this into a two part series. Unfortunately, when I got this one winch here, it didn't fit into this housing. So I'm probably gonna have to remove this bracket here and do something else. Originally, I was thinking about putting this 5,000 pound winch, but then after further analysis, I decided, let me get something a little bit bigger. This is an 8,000 pound winch. The vehicle itself, as it is right now, is at about 3,500. But I'm gonna go ahead, figure something out. Feel free to jump on the comments. Let me know what you would do if you would take the chance with a 5,000 pound winch or have a little bit more security and do the 8,000 pound winch that I got right here. It's a little bit bulkier, it's got more weight, but gives me a little bit more reassurance that if I get, ever get into a situation, I should be able to get out. So, while well, I figure out my next move, like always, keep wrenching.